Hi guys, welcome back to another video. You like the new lantern there? That's the one that we did during the live stream. It's finally 3D printed. I added a nice little coat of paint and uh, I think it adds to this sort of like whole dungeon vibe that we have now in the studio. So yeah, today I want to talk about a very important topic and that is softwares. We as 3D artists, we have a very interesting sort of like situation because we need to have all of the fundamentals from the artistic disciplines, right? Painting, sculpting, drawing, things like that. Design principles, composition, storytelling, those kind of things. But we also play a lot with the softwares themselves. I always encourage people to not become sort of like ingrained in just one software and try to see what of the other options are. So we know the big ones. We know ZBrush, we know Substance, we know Maya, Blender, we know Unreal Engine and Unity. But I wanna talk about a couple of softwares that I've been like really sort of like scouting for the past couple of months that I think are gonna be important. Maybe not for every single pipeline out there, but I wanna share this once with you, my friends, because this might be something, first of all, that you find interesting and that you are like, hey, that looks like something that I would like to learn how to do. And you start like delving deeper and deeper into those kind of like elements, or it could be, you know, a little bit of an extra tool that you can use for your portfolio or for your projects that might give you an edge later on in your professional career. So let's. Take a look at some of them. The first one I want to talk about, and I know it's not new, this has been around for a couple of years now, it's Embergen. Now, one thing that I've listened and I've uh, like heard a lot in the industry is that effects are getting more and more sort of like demanding, both in the production part of things, and studios are looking for more people who, who know how to do like cool effects for games and for film. So Embergen reminds me a lot of the old times when Substance Painter was just released and it was like owned by Algorithmic. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know this anecdote, Though, I was one of the first, like in my in my school group, one of the first like students that started using Substance Painter. At that point, everyone else was using Mari and Photoshop, and I saw it. And I was like, that that really resonates with me, and I like literally started learning about them. I remember going to GD6, GDC back in 2016 to the Algorithmic booth and everything. It was it was amazing. I'm still a huge fan of Substance, as you know, but it's always important to see what other options we have out there, right? So Embergen is one of those. Embergen, you know, you guys know BFX is not specific specifically my like a uh, forte it's not the the thing that I'm most specialized in but if you want to start learning about BFX I would recommend like taking a nice dive into this software right here now the interesting thing about the guys at Jenga FX is that not only are they doing the Embergen thing which is real time fluid simulations you know mo smoke uh, fire and all of this like uh, fluids they're also doing liquid simulations this one's I think is in alpha steel which is liquid gen and eventually they're going to be doing this one called a geogen which is more for like landscapes and elements and things like that i do believe like their their pricing is quite nice and uh, again the stuff that they have is very very cool another thing that i'm going to give this guys like a huge shout out for is that last year when all of the layoffs were happening they were offering free licenses for any artist that wanted to to learn the softwares and use them to improve their portfolios so if you want to get into bfx this one's definitely one to you know Keep an eye on. Another one that's big in the industry, but again, a little bit unknown, like a lot of the students, especially newer students, don't know about this, is Gaia. Gaia is what Vue, I think, used to be. Vue is another sort of like a landscape generating software that, that existed in the industry. And now Gaia has been like creating just amazing, amazing things. You can see all of the productions that it has been used. It is definitely, definitely used in the industry. I, like I'm not saying that this software that I'm mentioning are softwares that no one has heard about or that are like underdogs. I'm just saying that these are like sort of like satellite softwares that are really, really, really good. And not a lot of people put a lot of attention to them, right? Like we, again, we always talk about the big ones and the most like common ones, uh, Blender, Maya, ZBrush and all of this. But these are softwares that if you can afford to give it a shot and try to incorporate into your workflow, could look very, very nice on your resume. Now, the one thing I love about Gaia is that it's very, very fast. I have it myself. I, I bought a license a couple of months ago and it's really, really freaking good. You can generate all of this like very, natural looking uh, geographic elements that normally I would just go online and grab height maps to to get and you can literally art direct things such as where you want to have water rivers where you want to have like the mountain peaks snow all of these things and now one one thing that I love is for instance with Marmoset you can combine the the layer node inside of Marmoset to get some very very nice renders of your environments because of the tileable textures and the layering system you can get something that looks very very nice so if you 
like to, you know, work in bigger environments or you think about like this big shots instead of like just like simple little hero assets, this is definitely a software that I recommend you guys check. This one is a little bit more niche, but again, it's a great software. And I've actually featured this one on the channel before. This is Shape Lab. So maybe some of you guys got a VR headset for Christmas and yeah, you can play amazing games with it. There's some very, very fun experiences. But if you want to use it as part of some sort of like development, you guys know here in the studio, we do a lot of VR and AR development. This one right here is a great, great option. It has a great pricing. All of the tools that we're used to, like instead of ZBrush or Blender, such as like dynamic uh, topology and subdivision levels, multiple sub tools, mirroring functions. Uh, I believe they even have like a decimation feature that you can use to, to export things directly to 3D print. And that's the cool thing. You can use this one and directly export to any of the other software. So if you want to start your sculpt in the Shape Labs and then go into Blender or ZBrush or whatever to continue working on it, that's perfectly valid. I, I have a video here on the channel if you can case you want to see I have like the, the full workflow. They were very, very nice to give us the chance to test out the, the software. And I believe they recently released Shave Life 2025 with some more elements. So if VR is one of the things that you see has future let me tell you a little secret. There's a lot of future in VR, even though people don't want to admit it. Well, this is an excellent one to try out. Moving on, I definitely need to mention Marmoset. Again, I know this is not an underdog software, but the common question I get asked uh, on the Discord channel and some of the live streams is, is there on any other alternative to Substance Painter? Can we texture things with other softwares? And yes, Marmoset is one of those options. It's a really, really good software. It's been around for a long time now. And if you're a game like artist, if you're going to be doing a lot of stuff for games, this is one of the tools that you definitely need to have. The price tag is a little bit pricey at first. Like if it's the first time you buy it, then it can definitely be a little bit, uh, you know, expensive. But once you buy it, it's yours to own. There's no like subscription model. So this is another excellent thing to present your work. And actually, I can show you right here. I believe uh, in one of the portfolio pieces that I have this one right here. I actually did this project that, that was uh, commissioned to me by a client with Marmoset. Like all of this was rendered and done with Marmoset, I believe. So it's a strong software. You can definitely, definitely like get a lot of mileage out of it. And uh, one thing that I also love about this is the little thing that you can embed inside of ArtStation for your portfolio so that can people see the turnarounds. We do that all the time in portfolio, right? So another one that's definitely not to be a slept on. Another software that's really, really interesting to me is this one right here, Instamat. So Instamat has something very interesting because it combines three packages that you normally found in separate softwares. So it has layer-based texturing, similar to what we have in Marmoset or Substance. It has the creation or the ability to create node-based materials or graph-based materials, such as this one. Again, very similar to what we normally see inside of um, like Substance Designer, right? And it also has a sort of like geometry nodes thing that allows you to modify the geometry and create variations of your assets. So this one right here is very sort of like procedurally oriented. I personally don't do too many like procedurally things on my day-to-day -day work, but I've worked in some projects that definitely would have benefited a lot from this thing a couple of years ago because it allows you to really think about what the end result is going to be. And as long as you set everything up from the beginning, you're going to be able to sort of like mix and match things very, very nicely. Again, look at that mesh array and things like that. That's something that you don't find in other softwares. So it's, it's very, very interesting. Again, it's not industry standard yet, but this is my main point with this whole like video. There's a lot of softwares out there that are definitely helpful to achieve a specific results. And if it fits the kind of stuff that you're doing, it doesn't matter that it's not industry standard. You can definitely use them to generate something that's going to be appealing to you, to the project, and it's going to be part of the success of whatever it is you're trying to deliver. So Instamat, another one to really, really keep your eye on. This is another interesting one that has been recommended to me quite a bit. It's called Plasticity, and it's not really a traditional poly modeling software or sculpting software like we're used to seeing. This is CAT, right? So it's it's something that they usually use for product design or things like that. The interesting thing about this one is that even though it works very similar to a 3D software, you don't have to worry about topology. You just work with surfaces. You just work with the kind of detail that you want to model. This is something that if you're a hard surface artist might be like really worth considering. Now, what's the only sort of like caveat with this one? That's the fact that yes, you're going to have to bring this into Blender or Maya and do like a retopology process or something to really prepare the surfaces for whatever platform you're trying to do. But this kind of stuff, doing this kind of stuff traditionally inside of Maya or Blender takes time. So being able to do it pretty much on the go, definitely something that could be helpful. The next two softwares that I want to talk about 
have to do with the real world and how we introduce it to the digital world. Again, this one is not something new, but if you didn't know about this, Unreal Engine bought Reality Capture a couple of uh, like years ago or like a month, like a month ago, and now it's completely free. If you're going to be doing photogrammetry, which is again another one of those things that you normally don't think about, there's a lot of people out there that really need their products, their elements, their artifacts, museum collections, or whatever to be captured in the digital world and presented in a nicer way. Well, reality capture in this case is one of the best tools. I've used it before. Again, I think there's a couple of videos here on the channel where I do some scans, and um, and it's just great. It's just great. Even if you're going to be using it for your environment creation or environment development inside of uh, Unreal, this is just a great, great app to use reality capture make sure make sure you download it it's free might as well learn it. it's going to take you a couple of hours to at least learn the basics so that if you ever need to use it you're going to have again a little bit of an extra edge against everyone else and following that there is of course motion capture animation is tricky I, I i like doing animation i don't think i've done too many animation tutorials let me know if you guys want me to do a little bit of animation talk here on the channel but um a lot of animation tools are now moving towards the AI stuff. Uh, Rococo is one of the most famous ones out there, but there's a couple of others. There's one by uh, Adobe, I believe. There's one by uh, Move AI as well. So any like tool that allows you to do this capturing it's just amazing because, especially for instance, for someone like me, right? I consider myself a generalist. I know a little bit about everything, but I'm not an animator. So if I need to animate something, I can quickly model the character, throw in a rig, and then use some of these tools to rig or animate the character and have something that's at least presentable. Later on, I could have an animator come in and like help me clean stuff up, but you can see that you will get some very, very nice results. There's some interesting tools. I, I think I have one on my iPad, but I don't remember the name of it right now that allows you to literally just record yourself. You don't even need a suit. You don't need anything. Of course, the animation is not going to come as clean as if you had like multiple cameras and multiple like elements to record your movements, but it's something that can definitely, definitely help. So don't sleep on this kind of stuff. I know AI is contentious. I know we're like, oh, now AI is also going to take the, the jobs from animators. Remember, these are tools. These are things that we can implement within our workflows. And as long as we do them in a let's call it ethical way, as long as we're not infringing on anyone's liberties and we're not hurting anyone, we can find a way to use them. AI, unfortunately, is not going to go away. I do wish I had like a button to just erase it from existence, but it's not going to happen. So might as well learn what kind of tools we can use to make our work easier and make our results better. Last but not least, Godot. For all of those of you who are game developers and you are anti-capitalism like capitalism and you don't want to have any sort of like a big overlord controlling your lives, well, Godot is actually a nice option. I'm going to be honest, I haven't particularly used this one yet. We haven't had the need here in the studio to use it in any projects. We've been playing with Unreal and we've been using Unity for certain things. So, yeah, but still, having an open source option is always, always a good idea. I mean, let's just think about Blender, right? Like, Blender is a beast right now. I was talking with David a couple of days ago, and I mentioned, if you guys haven't heard about this, but Flow, the movie, it won the Golden Globe Award a couple of days ago, at least at the time of this recording, and I believe I read somewhere that it was pretty much completely done in Blender, like all of the production, the 3D production was done in Blender, which to me is amazing. It, it beat Inside Out. It beat, um, I think it was the other one by uh, DreamWorks, so like the, the, the robot one. Um, it, it just, like, it won. And having that, like, imagining that Blender would have such a big impact on the industry a couple of years ago was, again, very difficult to to think about. I know there's this huge war between Maya, Blender, open source, closed source, and that kind of stuff. But you guys got to remember that we as artists, what we like the most is to create. We like to express ourselves. We like to generate things that in, uh, inspire other people, right? So if this is your tool of choice instead of all of the other ones, that's fine. Uh, same for Godot. If you're going to be doing a game and you truly believe in what Godot is offering, which again, it's not bad. It's a really, really good engine. And the fact that it's free is also an amazing, amazing plus. Well, then you have here another software to, to keep your eyes on. And that's it, my friends. Those are, again, some softwares that I always have there on my mind and I think that could potentially become some powerful tools for all of us, no matter what industry or project you're working on. If you have any more softwares that you would recommend, let me know here on the, on the list. I know there's some very special ones, for instance, like 
like Fiverr shop specifically for hair cards, or we got, for instance, DaVinci Resolve for video editing, which is what I use to edit all of my videos. So I know there's very specific softwares. If you want to like list them down here, hey, knowing more of this is always useful for all of us. I know this was a little bit of a different video, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit. Maybe you found the software that's like, oh, that sounds interesting. I definitely want to learn a little bit about that. And if you did, also let me know here in the comments. Don't forget, we're going to have our usual live streams on Friday. So make sure to join us. And well, that's pretty much it. Don't forget, always learning, always improving. See you on the next one, my friends. Bye-bye.